Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday webinars. Um, today, I'd like to introduce our uh, introduce you to our uh, presenter, Lisa Mann. She uh, had one webinar in uh, March, uh, very interesting webinar. Today, she will be delivering a session on how to use grammar games in English lesson. Let me just give you a brief introduction about our today's presenter. Lisa Mann holds two master's degree, one in teaching English to speakers of other languages, TESOL, and another in translation and localization. She has enjoyed a long career in the field of applied linguistics and over the years has worked as an English language teacher, program director, teacher trainer, and translator in countries all over the world. During her time in Peru, she worked with the Ministry of Education to develop the national curriculum for English for adult basic education under the country's English Gateway to the World Initiative and helped to create a cascading peer-to-peer -peer teacher training program for English language teachers. On the other side of the world, in Uzbekistan, she served as an instructor and interim academic coordinator for Webster University's newly established MATSOL program in Tashkent. She has worked as an English language specialist twice in Tajikistan to provide professional development workshops to university and secondary school English language instructors. She currently works as a training consultant translator, translation professor, and editor in Spain. Thank you very much, Lisa. She's joining us from, actually, from Spain. Thank you very much, Lisa, for joining us today. And now I'll give the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, it's so nice to be in, in Tajikistan uh, with you today. I hope you're all very well. Um, today, our topic is using games in the classroom and using games as a way to practice grammar. Um, so I've got quite a lot to show you today. So let's just get started. Um, start with my, oops, my PowerPoint isn't set up, sorry. Okay. Go back. So yes, today's uh, session is about using grammar games and how you can use them and why you should use them and uh, when you can use them. And I'll give you some examples. So the contents are of today's webinar are five good reasons to use games with your English language learners or ELLs. And then I'll give you a few examples. Um, as we're watching the examples, you might want to take a few notes and try these with your own students. All of these games can be adapted uh, to your students' levels and interests um, and to your culture and your cultural context. Afterwards, I'll show you, I, and I hope we have time for this, I'll show you a few resources uh, where you can find games uh, to download and uh, adapt and use with your own classes. Okay, so first I wanna know, how often do you use games in your English language classroom? And we're gonna just take a little poll. Can we put that poll up? We'll take a poll and see what do you think? How often do you use games in your English language classroom? We have two questions. Oops. Yes, here we go. So the first question is how often do you use games? Often, sometimes, rarely, or never. And the second one is when do you use games? For example, I use games only as warm ups at the beginning of the lesson. I use games as an important part of my lessons. I use games to provide, to provide extra practice with certain grammar points, or I use games only as a special treat for my students. So let's see what you think. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to read and answer before we carry on. I think you can select more than one answer. Um, in the second one, but I don't remember if that's true or not. 
So just in case, select your most, <laughs> select the one that you use the most first, in case you can only select one, because I don't remember if I set it for multiple or not. Well, I got a few little answers there. Does anyone else want to give us your, your answer to this question? We've only got three out of seven. Four people haven't voted. Let's see. Just wait one second more. There we go. There's another person. Thank you for voting. <laughs> Good. Okay. So some people are typing in the chat um, some of the things that they do it. Some people say to practice a new topic, um, which is interesting too. Um, to provide extra practice, good, with certain grammar points, great. Okay, so let's just see, um, we've got about 50% of our attendance. <laughs> Someone says they use games in every class. Well, that's interesting and that's good too. Uh, we'll see in a moment some of the advantages of using games, but let's now look at our answers that we've got here in our, um, in our webinar uh, directly with our Zoom um, with our Zoom participants. And you can see uh, most of you often use games in the classroom. And most of you say is an important part of your lessons. Uh, some people say only as a warm up at the beginning of the lesson. And nobody said only as a special treat for my students. And I think that's something that's changing um, these days. It used to be that a game was like a really special treat, like before we went on uh, our summer vacation or something like that. But now I think most people recognize that games have uh, a place in the classroom, that they have um, pedagogical benefits and advantages. So let's just look at that. So, why should you use games with your English language learners? Um, and should we use them at all? And why or why not? Can you guys type in the chat why you think games are a good uh, addition to your regular lessons or why you think they are not a good addition? Just give me your opinion in the chat box. What do you think? Why should we use games? What do you think are the advantages or disadvantages of using games in our English language classes? Uh, to make learning fun, uh, good. If it's a warm up, the students will be more interested in the, in the upcoming lesson, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. It, our games as, uh, at my last webinar was about using games um, as warm ups and a warm up also just raises the energy, makes everybody feel happy and ready to go and, and motivated. Um, ah, good. Uh, somebody says to add variety to the classroom, which is nice. And another person says to make students more interested in the topic and the lesson. Those are all really good answers. Let's look at my five. Re uh, Adriana Barba says, um, students learn without realizing it and they have a good time. And that's so true, that's absolutely right. They they're practicing without even really um, knowing that they're, they're uh, consolidating their knowledge and experimenting with the language. You learn without noticing it because you're having fun. So let's look at five reasons I uh, have on this in this webinar for using. Uh, games with your English language learners. Now, I had a hard time choosing only five because for me, there are so, so many uh, reasons to use games with uh, in, in your English class. Well, the first one, and, and you mentioned this as well, is that games help your learners feel more comfortable and less nervous. And this has, you know, research has shown that this has a positive effect on language learning. If your students aren't nervous about speaking, then they 
they will speak more if they're they're shy and and they feel like you're judging them all the time then they they won't we say come out of their shell and they'll just sort of hold back and as we know they need to practice in order to improve practice makes perfect right um using games also encourages learners to take risks and experiment with the language which is also an important part of language learning um the, and again, they can do this in a sort of a safe environment with just their peers around them while they're having fun. Um, and that is a positive uh, aspect of games for language learning. It also provides, and this is really important, opportunities for learner initiated interaction. That means the, it's your students themselves who are asking questions out of genuine curiosity about their, uh, about their colleagues, about their peers and classmates. Uh, instead of the teacher always telling them what to say, they are thinking of their own ideas and they're using their own knowledge of English and their own knowledge of the world to ask and answer questions, which is super important. It's super motivating to have a conversation in a second language that you yourself um, imagined and created. Number four is um, that the, the interactions that games can prov provide are authentic. They're real interactions in which learners give opinions and talk about their experiences and express themselves in English, much as the same way that they would do in their first language, yeah, they, when they're sitting with their friends. And we want that to happen. We want them to feel that, that they can use English just like they use Tajik or Russian or German or whatever their first language is. And lastly, using grammar games allows students to practice and to improve not only their language skills, but also what we call soft skills. And soft skills are things like um, uh, socialization skills, socializing with other people, being kind to one another, yeah? uh, it, making suggestions in a, in a way that doesn't hurt anyone's feelings, uh, just these kinds of social skills and critical thinking skills. So it's not only just about improving language and having fun, it has other parts, um, other advantages that go beyond the English class. Yeah. So games, I think we can all safely say, uh, are a positive thing to bring into your, uh, into your language lessons and into your classes. So now let's look at a few examples of different types of games and different games uh, that you can use specifically to practice grammar. Yeah. In the grammar in the practice session of your grammar a section of your grammar lesson. Now the first one I'm going to show you are the uh, a few examples of activate board games, and these are board games are from um, the American English state gov website, and these are board games that you can that are free to download and print out. You can put them on sort of hard paper and plastic plastic on top of them and save them and use them again and again and again uh, with year after year with different students. So the first one we'll look at is this one, which is called, Have You Ever? Oh, When? <laughs> and for these games, for board games, of course, you need something like a dice. Uh, you, I usually have about six of these in my desk drawer just so that each, each team can have a dice to, to throw. And each player needs a little thing to a, a marker, some kind of little thing, a, a pencil sharpener, a bottle, cap or a little coin, something that represents them as they move around the board. And this game is obviously to practice the present perfect and the past simple and to um, work with com the, the, the comparing those two uh, verb tenses and how those two verb tenses interact and work together. Um, but it's also a really fun game. So again, as someone said, the students are learning and practicing without really even knowing that they're doing it. But um, this part, again, it comes in the practice part of your lesson, or it can work as a review before you um, before you have some kind of test or something like that on this on this topic. 
So the students roll the dice and they just move around and answer the question. For example, this one says, have you ever traveled to another country? And if the student says, yes, yes, I have. I've been to Uzbekistan. Then the other students ask them, oh, when? When did you go to Uzbekistan? If the student says no, they have to say something that they have done. For example, have you ever traveled to another country? And the student says, no, but I've traveled to another city. <laughs> and they say, ah, oh, when did you last go to another city? And they, they continue the conversation. Now, if the second student to start also lands on this one, they have to think of a different answer. They can't say, no, but I've traveled to another city, but they could say, for example, no, but I've traveled to um, my grandmother's house. <laughs> they can say whatever they want. And this is the beauty of these games is these questions are open and they can invent and have fun and, and it kind of forces them to, to use their imagination. Now, this game has uh, in the uh, on the website in the teachers directions, there are lots of different um, suggestions and some of the suggestions are for adaptations to this game. Um, one of the ones I like the most is that uh, you can't tell the truth. So in that variation, this is for if your students are a little bit higher level and you want to have a little bit more fun, um, they, they can't tell the truth when they, in the answer to any of these questions, right? So for example, have you ever worn a hat? No, <laughs> I've never worn a hat, but I've worn gloves. So they can never tell the truth in these. And they say, oh, when did you last wear gloves? And they have to really invent and pull from their English uh, knowledge to, to play that game and, and to play it with that adaptation, which I think is really lovely. Now, uh, one of the, the kind of classroom management issues that comes up when playing board games is that some teams might finish before others. Um, but with these games, you can go back and say, okay, you're finished now. I want you to just have a small conversation about all of the uh, questions that you didn't answer during the game. And that'll give them something else to do while we're waiting for slower, uh, slower groups to finish. You could also go back and say, okay, now I want you to answer all of those same questions, but this time you can't tell the truth. So bringing in that adaptation to extend the task for early finishers. I think these games are, are lovely. They're, they're beautiful and you can have them printed on sort of A3 paper. So they're quite big and again, plasticized. So you use them again and again and again. This is another one of these activate games and this one's a little bit easier topic. Uh, this is just, oops, what happened? Ah, sorry. This is just to practice the present simple. Um, what someone does and in this game, they have to say, uh, they, they have to say three things that people do in, in these different places, yeah. So they could say, for example, uh, someone at the beach swims, lies in the sand, and reads a book, yeah? And this is uh, practicing the third person and the teacher is sort of walking around and monitoring and listening for that S. Um, when I worked with my students, we in, in Spain here, my Spanish students could never remember that S on the third person. And we would, all of the students, when they heard someone forget the S, we'd all go at the same time. <laughs> so they said, they read, I heard someone read, and we'd all go, and they would correct themselves. So it reads, sleeps, reads, uh, watches, uh, watches the waves. Okay, so these games, I'll, and I'll show you the, re the resource afterwards, are all free uh, to download and to copy. You can use them as much as you want. And they cover lots of different, these are just two examples, but lots of different grammar um, points. And therefore, again, after you've sort of presented the grammar point, you've practiced it a little bit, and now uh, your students are able to, um, to have a little fun with the language. Yeah. Okay. 
Also in the activate games, you have this empty one and they give you this one, but you don't really need to download this or print it out. You can ask your students to draw it on a piece of paper, just using a ruler and a pen. And with this one, you can create your own one that fits in with whatever grammar point you're teaching in that lesson. For example, if you're teaching um, comparatives, you could put in each place, for example, um, three things that are bigger than an elephant, or two things that are smaller than an apple, or something that is more delicious than ice cream. And then the students have to go and practice those comparatives uh, through the game, which is, um, again, just a really nice way to practice. You can make these yourself, or you can ask your students to come up with good ideas for these games, which is also um, just in making the game, they're practicing the language. Yeah. Okay, so those were the um, Activate. Oh no, there's one more. This is also from Activate, these word bricks. Um, a word bricks are these, uh, these little uh, squares. A, a brick is uh, something that you use to build a building, right? So the word bricks are these squares that you can cut out and you can keep them in envelopes and use them again and again. Uh, and they have that in, in this Activate uh, book, there are just hundreds of words. So I, I think there's something like 200 words. Um, per set. So you can cut them out and, and ask your students to practice sentence, um, sentence making and sentence formation and, and word order and all kinds of things like that. All of these bricks have two sides with related words on them. For example, eat is maybe on one side and eight on the other, or is on one side and are on the other. So your students can practice making sentences, for example, in the present, and then changing them to the past or changing something in, uh, in them to, uh, to compare two verb tenses, for example. There are also cards that um, modify words like an S or an ED or an ING. So you could have uh, change this word play to plays or played or playing uh, using these modify, uh, modifying words, these modifying bricks. Um, you, there are also blank bricks in the, uh, in the Activate games and you can use those to uh, fill in with words that you've been working on with your students or grammar uh, structures that you've been working on so that your students have to create sentences that really focus in on what you've been teaching them recently. And there are other games that you can use these with. Uh, instead of just making sentences, you can have your students sort them into, for example, put all the verbs in this column and all the adjectives here and all the nouns here. Um, and that can be a race. You know, the, the, the team that does that the fastest is the winner. A competition is always a nice way to raise people's interest and energy. Or you can ask them who can create the longest sentence out of um, out of these words. Yeah. So these are word bricks. Again, I'll show you the resource at the end. Now, here are a few examples of you know, low and no resource games. You don't need to print something out in order to play a game. Um, one of the uh, uh, fun ones, even for adults, <laughs> and I teach I mean, I've taught university students who love to play board races or SWAT, and it's basically like this. You write some words on the board, whatever structures you're, you're working with, and um, you have your students line up in two teams and say, for example, a sentence that in the present, in this case, and this one, the students from both teams have to run up and the fastest one to hit it um, gets the point. You can also put these onto uh, post-it notes if you want, uh, and they have to run up and take it. And then afterwards they can work with those verbs that, that are on the post-it notes to do something else to create a story or a dialogue um, uh, using the past tense. Yeah. So this is super this is super action uh, oriented, super energetic, and students uh, really love to, to run up and hit the board and and have that kind of uh, interaction. Uh, a, a variation on this is uh, one called SWAT. Um, 
And here's a picture of some little kids doing it with um, uh, fly swatters. And these fly swatters, you know, they're, they're super cheap. You can buy them everywhere and, and just have a couple in your classroom. And they can hit the board when you say a word or when you say um, uh, a, a sentence, or you can have them just the answers on a piece of paper on the table and then the person on each team has to hit it. The fly swatters are good because you can see who hits first. <laughs> and the person who hits it first is the winner and they get to take that card. Um, and the, the team with the most cards at the end is the winner. So this is called SWAT. And you can, again, adapt it for anything you're working on. Yeah, the, the present, the past. Um, you can have, you can read a fill in the blank question and the students have to SWAT the, the best and most suitable uh, word that fits in that blank. Uh, there are all kinds of ways and variations to use the board race or, or SWAT. Okay. Um, Another low resource game is just a, a student chain. So it's, it's a chain uh, a, a circle. And in these kinds of games, students usually stand or sit in a circle. Um, and if you have a super big class, you can put them into two or three smaller circles, but then you have to really kind of monitor um, what they're doing. This is an activity you can do orally or in writing. Um, it depends on what you're focusing on. Uh, in this one, uh, uh, the example I'm giving you here is uh, with the second conditional, but you can do it with any conditional form and other uh, verb tenses uh, and grammar structures, which I'll show you in a second. But the first student begins by just saying a sentence in the conditional um, that you're practicing in that lesson. For example, in the second conditional, they might say, if I lived in the US, I'd speak English perfectly. And the second student has to take the end of that sentence and add to it. For example, if I spoke English perfectly, I would study at Oxford University. And then the next student has to take the end of that sentence. If I studied at Oxford University, I would become a famous, sci a famous scientist and so on. Well, this is fun because your students are using their own ideas, um, but they are practicing the, uh, the target structure, in this case, the second conditional. And one of the advantages of games that I didn't mention before is that they tend to include a lot of repetition. So they're not only practicing it once, they're practicing it 10 times in a row. So they really start to get um, to remember and to get used to forming their mouths around uh, this type of, um, this type of uh, structure. Um, it, in all of these games, and but especially in games where students are required to just produce something without very much thinking time, it's a very good idea to have an example on the board or sentence stem on the board so that the less confident ones can look over and see what how to form the the uh, the sentence that you're asking them to form. Another easier chain is just with the present simple. Um, and that is, uh, you can, to practice the third person, which again is something people tend to, students tend to have trouble with sometimes. Um, you can ask your students to write a true sentence about themselves, about their own daily routine. And then in their circle, uh, student one reads his or her sentence. For example, I get up at 7.30. And student two has to say what student one does before reading his or her own sentence. For example, Nagina gets up at 7.30. I don't eat breakfast. And the next student has to say um, what, what student two does before reading his or her own sentence. Like, who doesn't eat breakfast? I walk to school. And to make it more challenging, you can ask your students to try to remember every other student's statement before they can say their own. For example, Nagina gets up at 7.30, Kudrat doesn't have breakfast, I walk to school, yeah? So then it gets more challenging and more fun because they're trying to remember, they're using that third person S and they're repeating again and again the structure that you're teaching them, which makes it very memorable. 
This is also about them and everybody likes to talk about themselves. Yeah, if that's, a, <laughs> that's an international truth. Everybody likes to say things about themselves. So this makes this very memorable and interesting way to practice. Much more interesting than filling in the gap, right? Much more interesting than saying, okay, everybody fill in the gap and write uh, the, the daily routine. Yeah. Okay, one last one I want to share with you today before I show you some resources are um, picture cards. And these cards can be used for a million different purposes. Um, one of the best games with these ones is, oops, sorry. Uh, one of the best games for these picture cards that I like is a, um, a game, a guessing game. So your students are in two groups, two teams, and they, one team at a time sends a person up to, it's, sometimes it's called hot seat, sends a person up to the front and the teacher shows their teammates some cards and these were and they have the students have to describe these words to their teammate as fast as possible to guess so that their teammate guesses as many cards as they can in one minute and then it's the other team's turn and then at the end of the game whoever has the most cards is the winner so let's just try one um, for example i might say this is the opposite of late what is it? This is the opposite of late. If I wake up at 630, that's very, and that's right. Oops, got that wrong. That's very early, right? So all of these cards, they have a different picture and the, st the students just have to describe them very quickly to their teammate who has to guess. Now these could be a, a vocabulary set that you're working on. Um, for example, all of the jobs or all of the colors, or it can be anything you want. To extend this game, you can give the uh, cards to each of the teams and then they have to do something with them, like create a story. Now, this is a, a, to practice a very important skill, which is called circumlocution. And you can see from the root here that circum is, means circle and locution means speak, right? So uh, training your students and giving them opportunities to practice saying words that they don't, describing words that they don't know is a very, very useful skill. And it's part of the common European framework of reference, the suffer. It's part of their, um, of their uh, uh, essential goals is to have, a lot, uh, is to train students and, and uh, teach learners to speak about something when they can't remember or they don't know the word. It's called mediation. Just knowing what they, trying to use what they do know to say something that they don't know. And this, so this game is fun and it's very, very useful as a world skill. Okay, so these games, as you can see, these cards are beautiful and the games before um, were beautiful. And I'm just gonna show you now where those are and how you can find them, okay? So the, um, the first games I showed you, the card games, I mean, the board games are from the American English uh, website. And this is what it looks like. It's AmericanEnglish.state.gov. Yeah. And you can search here in, it has tons of things here in resources and programs. You can find lots of different things, uh, teaching the four skills, US culture, music and games, webinars and MOOCs. Um, there's also access to English Teaching Forum, which is a magazine about teaching English. And if you haven't considered ever writing about your experience as an English teacher, you might look at this because there are ways you can submit um, uh, your own ideas and your own articles and, and possibly get published in a, in, a, in a major magazine. And wouldn't that be great? So these are activate games for learning English. Those are the, these are the board games we saw. And here is the, um, here, I, I just did a search for these, but you can find them on this if you just type in activate. Here are the 
games, all of these different games here. And this is published by the Department of State. And each game comes with a an instruction, instructions and the game and the game board, which again you can download and use for free. So and the instructions are very, very useful because they give alternatives. If you have, if you think the game is too difficult, maybe for your uh, your learners, look in the instructions because there might be a way to make it easier or to bump it up if you if you think it's too easy already. Yeah. So there are great. Look at this one. What you might find in the USA, in the ocean, in the jungle. And just really fun ways to get your students talking and relaxing together. Okay, so this is Activate American English. Ch check it out if you have a chance. There are lots and lots and lots of games that you can get from here to practice different grammar structures and vocabulary. Okay, another one, the, the cards that I showed you are from a website called Send Teacher. And um, SEND stands for Special Educational Needs. So this, this website was designed for people who teach uh, students with, for example, with autism or with um, intellectual disabilities or with um, attention uh, deficit disorder. But the, the materials are so beautiful, I use them a lot in my own classes. So. Um, in Send Teacher, you look for them here where it says printable printables. So this is sendteacher.org. And for our purposes, we want to click on literacy. Yeah. And in literacy, you'll see some of the most popular kinds of printables that are there. And the ones that I showed you today are were these word and picture cards. Now these here, this one is already made, but what's really great about these is that you can make your own uh, and you can make them so that they have the word underneath only, or you can make them so they only have the picture, or you can make them so that they only have the picture and then on the back is the word. And what's great is that you can add your own. So let's try to make a card. So think if you can tell me something that your work at a vocabulary words that you maybe your students are working with now at the moment just tell me any word and type it into the chat we'll do a simple search okay here's somebody it says fruit draw okay let's look at draw so draw and you, this is where I, I typed symbol search. I clicked symbol search here and I wrote draw. Now I'm doing search. And we have all of these possibilities. Oh, look, they put drawer there. <laughs> and I don't know why dry hair is there, but this is the one we're looking for, something like that or like that one. So let's click this one. So now we've made this card and we can put the word next to it and then just click save. And we've made a card. It's taking a second because my internet connection is slow. Uh, there it is. And again, we can click here. So it's just the picture. If you're trying to test your students on verbs, um, again, that was just clicking on add card and then symbol search. And it can be really kind of complex, to think, complex things like um, embarrassed, for example, if you're teaching words about uh, how feelings and emotion. And look, there's a little girl who looks embarrassed. And you can put that word there and save it. And then again, you can write the text under the pictures if they need that support or not. If you think they can guess without that. And then you just go to um, a print preview here. And you get a PDF like this and you just download it download pdf to your computer and print it out yeah so you can print it and again plasticize it use it again and again after uh, for many many different lessons um these cards you can use for that circumlocution game that i showed you or you can use them for other kinds of grammar games and vocabulary games um, in which students have to 
uh, uh, do something with a cue. You know, so you give them a set of animals and they have to talk about a day at the zoo, for example, and use all of those words. Okay, so that is all I have for you. Uh, no, I don't. I have some considerations, a few more things um, before we say goodbye. And that is um, some considerations in the classroom when you are using games. Some things you should probably um, think about. So let me just go to the end here. Yes. Okay. So remember that games are fun, but they should <laughs> they should fit in with your lesson uh, and your course objectives. They're they're fun, but they aren't only fun. And um, if and you don't have a game that fits in with what you're teaching that day, then maybe you shouldn't do a game, right? Uh, so it has to sort of fit in and work towards what your uh, lesson purpose is and your lesson objective is. Um, and group works, a group work is a key part of lots of games um, and groups of three to four students are, are the best. If you have larger groups, you sort of give your students permission to not pay attention while somebody else is talking, right? And there's a little bit too much downtime between turns. So three or four students in a group um, and just spread them out and go walk around and monitor and listen and make sure everyone's on task. Uh, the vocabulary and structures needed to play the game should be familiar to the students. So you wouldn't want to play, have you ever, oh yeah, when, when your students have never studied the present perfect or the past or the difference between them. That's a game to practice those things and that's what it should be used for. Um, although some games require your students to produce just a word or just a sentence, um, it should always connect back to some kind of communicative purpose in a follow act up activity, for example. Like when I showed you those pictures of the um, animals there, if you give your students a set of animals, it should connect to some communicative uh, situation in which someone would need to talk about a lot of animals, for example, at the zoo. Right. So it should always connect it back to something sort of realistic that you could imagine yourself, your students saying in real life. Um, also consider that games are fun and students get loud and the class can get very noisy when you're playing games. So you have to be prepared for that and have some kind of cue, some kind of signal that means lower the volume. And that is often some kind of nonverbal cue, like flicking the lights a few times or holding up your hand, um, just so that the classroom uh, remains at a relatively uh, calm uh, level of volume. And lastly, uh, give your, uh, give your learners the freedom to to experiment and to use the language uh, in a fun in fun interactions with their peers and try not to intervene too much as i say if walking around and monitoring and you want to write down um, errors that you hear with the uh, target structure and then go over them afterwards on the board that's probably the best way rather than interrupting their fun okay so here are the um, links for those, uh, those resources I showed you. Um, they activate games for American English. They are a, um, I, I, there, I couldn't find any one author for those games. I believe that they are a comp compilation of many different teachers' um, uh, efforts. And they're published by the State Department and Send Teacher, of course, is where I showed you the cards. Um, and that's all I have. Do you have any questions for me or ideas or thoughts? Uh, if you hear me clap one, somebody is telling me their cue. Thank uh, you very much, Lisa, uh, for the uh, tips and for the games and the resources that you have provided. So we have got a question here. Um, just teaching grammar and using games uh, while teaching grammar, how we can all also foster like the listening skills? Listening skills, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of a, a, a game um, for listening skills. Well, I suppose you could use, um, you know, the board race 
uh, game, you could adapt that to a listening game where they have to um, listen to you read something and then run up to the board when they hear you say a specific word or one of the words that's on the board and grab that down, yeah. Also songs, uh, songs, although they're not games, but I've seen songs used very effectively in the classroom when students are each given uh, a word that's going to, uh, that's going to, they're going to hear in the song. And when the song plays, they have to stand up when they hear their word, which is, um, it's really fun because they end up standing up and sitting down lots of different times because songs are quite repetitive. Um, mm -hmm. Those are both listening games. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lisa. Mirza Sharif is asking how can we differentiate games activities for strong and weak students in the class? Yeah, D differentiating for mixed classes is always uh, is always difficult. Uh, the board games I showed you have some suggestions for how to sort of bump it up or bump it back down a little bit for weaker and stronger. As, uh, for weaker and stronger students. But you could also, if you are creating your own games, um, for example, a board game with the, the uh, template that I showed you, you could make a couple of different versions and put your students into groups based on, um, uh, based on their ability level. Yeah. And also, it, and that's an important point too that I forgot to mention in the last slide is that uh, when you are doing team games, uh, it's good not to put all of the best students in one side and all of the lower level students in the other side because the one team is certainly going to win and the other team is going to feel really, really bad. So it's a good idea to sort of mix that up. Somebody oh. else? Uh, Lisa, uh, how much time do you usually give for the board games? Because students love board racing, sorry. They love uh, the board racing and they just want it, you know, to have more and more. So how much do you usually spend on that? Well, board <laughs> the board race, the one of the, the the advantages of the board race is that you control how many how many questions there are. I usually let it, one student go one time. Right, like they don't just keep getting to go again and again and again because it just takes too long. So, I mean, but if you only have five or six students, you can let them go several times. But I just let you know they have they're in two lines, and the first two students run up and and hit, and once they've done it once, then then that's it. Yeah, because it can just go on forever and ever. They love it. You know, and if you, again, I said this last time, but you can always say, I'm so glad you love this game. We're going to play it again next week. <laughs> now let's everybody sit down and get back to what we were doing before or uh, move on to our next thing. Yeah. Thank you. Lisa Mazam is asking, but for secondary school, what can you advise about teaching of grandma, teaching grandma, especially for pupils uh, five and uh, seventh grades? Well, teaching grammar and practicing grammar are kind of two different um, things. So these games are intended to practice uh, grammar that you have already taught them and that they, uh, they have some uh, notion of. Um, but all of those games I showed you uh, can easily, easily be used with uh, lower levels, if that's what your question is, uh, lower level grammar structures, uh, like the present simple, like the verb to be, um, very, very easy, um, uh, easy uh, structures for students to get and that are very, very commonly taught at the very lowest levels. Yeah, Dojuniso is saying students sometimes get so competitive during certain games that they switch to their uh, first language just to win. Would you stop them and spoil the fun or let them continue? I would stop them. Them, but that's just me because the point isn't just to have fun and now that, that's why I said I mentioned that on my last slide is because although it's great I mean it's, it makes you happy that your students are happy right but the the point is that they should be practicing their English right and if they switch to L1 you have to just you know hey can you say that in English English guys come on guys let's do it in English okay say that again but in English you know just keep pushing them because the point of the game is not to have fun. <laughs> the fun is sort of mm, extra. <laughs> the point is to practice English. 
All right, and Guloro is asking, is there any case in foreign language classes where games are not recommended? Well, I always do games. I mean, not every day, but I, I always do. But I've also taught academic English at the university level. And the number of games we did, to tell you the truth, was pretty limited, just because we had a lot of material to cover in a relatively short amount of time. And if students, if it's a writing course, for example, um, then students do focus, uh, need to focus on certain things in the class. Room. But again, those were university students who are older and more able to uh, focus on academic things in the classroom. And even with those guys, I did play games sometimes, but just not as much as I would with younger learners. Yeah, so the higher level the students are, the I mean, the fewer games you uh, play with the students. And uh, again depends on what the program requires right exactly and it's not really even the level i wouldn't say that i would say it's the age yeah because uh, the students at a younger uh, students at a younger age need so much more uh input and, and so much more influence from us to get motivated about and interested in um, speaking the language whereas students as at a at an older age they know the advantages of learning english and and that's motivation enough in many cases i can share my experience that my students uh, who were like Doctors, they just love the board racing. Yeah, exactly. Love playing that. Yeah. Game. I know, it's the truth. It's true. I, I, when I'm in a class and, I, and a teacher does a game with me, you know, I'm in my 50s. I love it. I love games. Everybody does. Who doesn't like to have fun? But, uh, you know, the, the number of games I think you need to do um, depends on, you know, on, on who your students are and what their needs are and what, what your course needs are and what your curriculum mm -hmm. uh, dictates. Yeah, Azam, John is asking what kind of games can we use for adults, for example, journalists? English for oh. specific purposes, like, you know, journalists. Yeah, yeah, you know, all of those games, I think, um, it, especially the ones where you can sort of make them yourself. You can choose vocabulary sets, that you're working with with your students. So if you have specific journalism um, type expressions or journalism vocabulary that you want to practice, you can make those little cards that, um, that have those words on it. You can make a board game that uses that. You can make a board race that uses that. And you'll see even journalists who are yeah, like in their 50s will run up to the board <laughs> to get yeah. their fears to slap. <laughs> Just, I mean, changing the content, right? Exactly. And the same yeah, game. Just, you know. Yeah, same games, just change the content. Yeah. And that's the same answer for differentiating mm -hmm. instruction for abilities. The, the same games, just changing the content slightly so that. Um, so this might be our last question from the uh, Facebook participant uh, who is asking if you can uh, recommend any books and uh, that teaching grammar with games. Uh, teaching grammar through games. Uh, I can't recommend off the top of my head any games. I used to use one. I, yeah, off the top of my head, I can't. I was just looking at one the other day. I, I, I wish I could contact that person afterwards because I have a terrible memory for names and for author names, but I, I, I can't off the top of my head recommend one. Um, right. uh, Lisa, we actually have uh, uh, in our, on our website uh, a section called forum and where we just post the webinars. After we have the webinar, we just post the uh, title and our uh, participants can just put their questions there. Those who uh, couldn't huh. attend, they can watch. Uh, the, we have the recordings there. You can watch and leave your questions and Lisa might, uh, you know, write the answers to this question and also the books that uh, she might find, right? Yeah, um, I can definitely do that. And I can put the links um, that are in this uh, in this web webinar there as well, for those of you who didn't have a chance to write them down so you can look at them. Yes, because we share all the resources as well. Those of you who want to uh, access the PowerPoint presentation of Lisa, you can download it from our website. 
And Lisa was also mentioning about the Activate games uh, in American State Go. We also have these games in our, on our website under the Teaching Secondary, which is really easy to find. Under the Teaching Secondary, you will find uh, games and activities. And the ones that Lisa was sharing, you can uh, access those there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, the uh, English Without Borders website is, yes. is going to be really, really useful for you for searching the um, for searching for games from the American English website. Yeah, and you'll have everything there in one place. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, thank you very much, Lisa, uh, again for you know volunteering. Every, we appreciate your time, your knowledge, and uh, all the work that you're doing for our project. Uh, we're so happy to have you on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, and we hope that we will have another webinar like uh, later, maybe in the uh, summer. Yes. Uh, yeah, we are looking forward to your uh, sessions as always oh. and as our participants. Uh, thank you very much again. Okay. And thank you to your participants. And uh, we will, uh, we are looking forward to the next uh, Thursday, our next webinar. Thank you, Lisa, again. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for coming. <laughs>